Hello! So today we are going to be talking about how to sort a linked list. And this is a special linked list because this is the one that is in the libeom that we have been working on throughout all of these videos. So we want to sort this linked list, but we want to do it in a way that handles the data types that it stores appropriately. So if we look back to things that we have written in the past, the linked list is dependent on this node object and our node object stores data as void pointers. So we have to be able to compare these void pointers to one another, and that presents a problem because void pointers have no associated data types, so they have no associated comparison, and we cannot use those binary comparison operators on void pointers. But there's a simple solution to this, and we will see it as we begin building our sorting method. So let's go ahead to the linked list.h file, and we are going to first increase the font size, and let's add a member method. This is going to be one of our public member methods, and we're just going to call it sort. So we're going to sort the list. And the way we are going to implement this is one in which you call this function, and it will simply sort the list, and the list will from then on be sorted until you add new things to it. So if you don't add anything to it, then you just call this function and it will be sorted. If you add something else to it after that, then everything up until that point will be sorted. So that is basically how our sort for function is going to work. So let's define it. So we will have, it will be void because it returns nothing. This is a function pointer we're going to call sort. And it's going to take as arguments the linked list itself. So struct linked list pointer linked list. And it's also going to take a function pointer as a parameter of the function pointer. The reason for this is that we want the user to define a compare function. So I don't know what kind of data the, the user is storing in this void pointer. So let's say they're storing strings. Well, then when the user is going to sort these, they will provide their own comparison function, like string compare. And then over each item in the linked list, we will do our comparison using the comparison function provided. That way we know that the, the void pointers are cast appropriately. So here we are going to take another function pointer. This is going to return an integer, and it's going to be called compare. And it's going to take two void pointers as its arguments. So a void pointer called A and a void pointer called B. Now, when the constructor is called for this linked list over in the .c file, we want to actually be able to specify that there is a function ready for it. So we will add a prototype up here, and we can just copy it. And we'll paste. And we have to change it from a function pointer to a prototype. And then in our actual linked list constructor, we want to say new list dot sort equals sort. And now we can actually define what this sorting algorithm is going to do. And we could implement any sorting algorithm we want here for the most part. So there are certain circumstances in which you'll want one over the other, and I would encourage you to research all of those different sorting algorithms to find the one we want. And you can use this as sort of a guide. This is big O notation. And big O notation is going to tell us how efficient the algorithm is as it grows. So if we have a list, let's say on this graph right here, the edge over here on the x-axis is 100. And over here, it'll be 0. So 50 would be in the middle. If we have 50 items in our list, if we use a searching algorithm that has big O notation n log n, it will take roughly this many iterations for it to be sorted. However, if we have something like O n squared as our big O notation for our algorithm, then 50 elements is going to take an exponentially long time to sort. And unfortunately today, we are going to be using such an algorithm. We are going to be using simple bubble sort, which just 
basically compares every item to every other item. So it has a roughly big O notation of n squared. Not the greatest sorting algorithm, but the idea here is more how you would do this in terms of using void pointers and allowing the user to specify their own comparison function. By allowing them to do that, we can streamline this process and make it so that we only have to define things once. We can store things as a void pointer, which allows us to store anything we want to in this. And then when it comes to comparing, well, we just tell the user that they have to tell us how to compare, and that's the basic idea. Anyway, let's go ahead and implement a bubble sort for our sorting algorithm, and we can change this later. So we'll paste all that down here once more. And I actually should change the name of this function. Instead of sort, let's call it sort ll. The reason being, this, this is a becoming a larger library. And as it grows, everything has to remain unique in its names. This all gets compiled together into a single .a file. So everything here gets compiled together. And as a result, I can't have a function called sort over in this .c file and over in this .c file. So I am adding an underscore ll just to make it a little more specific. But that shouldn't be confused with the sort that is a member variable to our linked list struct. That is a different thing. We can have repetitive names within structs as members. We just can't have them in this global scope. Anyway, so we have defined our sorting algorithm and let's actually implement it here. So this is a interesting way to do it. So we are going to start with a for loop. We'll say int i equals zero. i is going to be less than linked list, whoops, linked list arrow length, which is just the number of items in the list. And we'll say i plus plus. So that'll be our outer loop going through every item of the list all the way through. And then we're going to have an inner loop. It's going to do the same thing. So for int n equals i, well, let's do i plus 1. n is also going to be less than linked list length. And we'll say n plus plus as well. So essentially, we're going to have two cursors, one that's going to start here and one that's going to start here. And the way that the bubble sort works is that we will compare this one against this one. And if this one is greater or this one is greater, depending on if we're sorting ascending or descending, we will swap them. And then we'll compare, well, let's assume we did not swap it. Then we'll compare this one with this one, and then with this one, and then with this one. And if we find one where it's greater, we're simply going to swap them. And we're going to do that as many times as it takes until the list is sorted. It just so happens that by moving this one and then going through every single one and then moving this and then going through every single subsequent one and just continuing that process and flipping them any time that the sizes are not in line, that will end up sorting the whole list. But you can see in my description there why this is inefficient. We start with one, we test it against every other. We start with the next one, we test against every other. It's a lot of repetitive testing, but that's okay. We're just doing a simple algorithm here. So for each of these iterations, we want to actually do something and we can't use the retrieve function of the linked list because if you look at our retrieve function, this is actually going to return a void pointer. So it returns the data found in a given cursor rather than the node itself. So we actually want to get those nodes. So let's say struct node pointer cursor i equals, what is it? Iterate ll, we'll pass it linked list, which is already a pointer. And we want to get it at the index i. So this is going to return whatever node is in position i. And we'll do the same thing for n. So struct node pointer cursor n equals iterate ll linked list and n. 
So here, rather than using this retrieve function, which is going to give me the data stored in the node, I'm using this iterate function. And the iterate function actually returns the, no, this is the insert I'm looking at, I'm sorry. The iterate function actually returns the node itself. And by returning the node, I can actually just swap their void pointers rather than having to change the nodes themselves. You'll see in just a moment. What we'll do is test if compare cursor i data and cursor n data. If that equals one, so if the data stored in the node that is cursor i results in a one when tested against the data stored in cursor n, then we are going to swap them. So here we're using the compare function that the user has provided, which takes these two void pointers. Those are going to be the void pointers stored within each node. And we are going to pass those into that compare function, which assuming the user has done things properly, will cast those back into whatever they need to be, returning a one if the first is greater, a negative one if the second is greater, and a zero if they are equal. So if we do this compare function and the result is one, we need to swap them. So we're going to create a temporary void pointer We'll just call it temporary. And we're going to set this equal to cursor n data. Now we are setting it equal to cursor n's data. And remember that data in the void or in the node struct is actually itself a void pointer. So we are actually just storing the memory address of this data here, not the data itself. And that's important because in the next steps, when we swap them, all we're doing is saying this memory address is now over here, this memory address is now over here. We are not duplicating or moving the objects themselves. So if I store the number five here and its memory address over here, well, then I can move the memory address over here without having to do anything to my five and now I can access it here. So we are going to say cursor and data will now equal cursor i data and cursor i data is now going to equal temporary. And remember, these are all just memory addresses. So now we're saying the memory address stored here is now what was stored here. So we've just given them new memory addresses, which now point to the appropriate pieces of data, and that will do the swapping for us. So this is a very simple sorting algorithm. We just have two for loops, an inner and an outer, and they are going to pass in the data from each of these nodes into the compare function that is specified by the user. And if the comparison hits the condition in which we want to swap, since each of these nodes contains its data as a memory address rather than the data itself, we can simply swap them and now everything will work fine. So let's go ahead and write a quick test. So for my test, I'm going to actually just comment out all of this because I'm going to need it again in the future. And what I'm going to do is create a struct linked list, we'll call it LL and we'll call it linked list constructor. Okay. So now let's go ahead and insert some numbers into it. So for int i equals 10, i is greater than zero, i minus minus. And we'll say ll.insert, and we need to pass it the address of the linked list itself, the data we want to store, so the address of i, and the size of i that will insert it into the list so we'll have 10 9 8 7 6 etc etc in reverse order and it's missing something what was it what is it missing here let's see we have an 
int. Oh, it's position. We need to pass it its position in the list. And we want to put it in position 10 minus i. Because we want to insert them 1 through or 0 through 9, and then we want to, what we want to insert is 10 through 1, essentially. Anyway, we get it. We, get it. we are inserting these numbers in reverse order. And then at the end of that, we can say ll.sort, and we will pass it the address of ll, and we need a compare function. So we are going to create that. We'll call it int compare, takes void pointer a and void pointer b, and we'll say int pointer x is going to equal a, int pointer y is going to equal b. That's going to give us an implicit casting from a void pointer to an int pointer. And with some data types, you can lose precision with that kind of implicit casting, but here it should be fine. So we are going to cast those over to int pointers, and then we will can simply say if dereferenced x is greater than dereferenced y, return one else if the dereferenced x is less than the dereferenced y return negative one and then else return zero so that is our comparison function so we can simply pass that in here so int compare was it so that's our comparison function and then we can say for int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, printf percent d, new line, and then we are going to actually get the data out of the linked list because it should now be in order. We're going to want to dereference that since it's going to return a void pointer to us, but we also want to cast that as an int pointer because that's what we're storing in those void pointers. And what we are going to cast is ll.retrieve eve address of ll, and we are going to pass it i. So it is going to retrieve whatever is in each item one at a time from beginning to end, cast the result of that to an int pointer, dereference that, stick it in this string, and then print it out for us. So if we run this, we should get, yes, go ahead and stop whatever you're doing. We should get one through 10, there we go. And if we copy and paste this before the sort, we can see it'll print them backwards first. Put a couple new lines in there in between. So here you see 10, 9, 8, 7, five, four, one, et cetera, and one through 10. So we are successfully sorting our linked list using a bubble sort. So I hope that was informative. The big takeaway I want you to have from this is twofold. One is that you can allow the user to specify an additional function to run as a parameter to a function itself using a function pointer. And those look just like this. Also, the bubble sort, though an inefficient algorithm, is an effective sorting algorithm for our linked list. We could go for a more efficient one here, such as the merge sort, for instance. So the merge sort rather notoriously has an excellent efficiency for sorting, but the problem with it is that it is inefficient with memory and we would have to have a duplicate linked list or multiple linked lists containing sub linked lists and I was not going to do that for this video. So maybe in the future we'll do a merge sort algorithm here, but for today that is our bubble sort of a linked list. So thank you for joining me. I hope you found this informative. The reason I'm doing this is that I am building a peer-to-peer -peer network from scratch and I do that in live streams Saturday at nine. So maybe you'll join us for that. If you do, you might like to check out our Discord. There is a link in the description. And as usual, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Toodaloo.